So, let's start uh, adding a few things. So, first of all, what I want to tackle is on our multiplayer listener. Okay, we are sending if we are aiming, but we don't. We only assign the states is aiming. We never change the animator. We do have an action on the client that says update movement animation all. Okay, they, which does this, the same thing, but it never goes onto the animator itself and changes if you are aiming or not. So, there is two ways we can check about this. And the way that uh, is more coherent to our design is to create a new action. So, let's just do that. So, that will be going into our state actions, add, actually let's copy all of this and let's go into our state actions again, add a new class and I'm going to say update aiming. Okay, I'm going to paste all of this, I'm going to rename this to update aiming. I'm going to change the name on the create asset menu as well and I don't want to do anything over here other than saying states.anim.set bool let's see what we have in our states dot hashes dot we should check for aiming and I guess we don't have it okay let's go add it then definition and we have all of this we of course want a public int for is aiming animator string to has I think it's called aim or something like that let's check the animator for the to check that we also need to take a look into our controller so let's check for type animator controller let's close that okay I think it's either one of these yeah simply aiming okay close this then is aiming and of course it's going to be the same as states dot is aiming okay that's its only job we are only going to need this for for the multiplayer parts so let's go on to our data into our state actions over here multiplayer actions and create a new action state actions and say update aiming Okay, I could have just add the same line over here. But yeah, I think it's better to decouple as much more as we can, even if it's just a single line. And I'm going to say move it first. So whenever you are aiming, you are also changing the animations you are passing from taking the move amount and assigning it onto the vertical. We split it up and assign the vertical and horizontal differently and this is for multiplayer as well okay now let's go and sync the starting items how do we know which items we start with if we go into our controller let's we'll start from here well this is the multiplayer manager let's go to the controller on to our inventory we now only have one weapon so that's only one ID so that's pretty much easy to do but what I want to do is let's see we have our input handler okay and we have also our network print okay so let's go and and create some profiles I'm going to say player profile let's find it again it's going to be inside manager 
player profile let's delete all of this add the namespace and I want this to be taken from scriptable object create a set menu then menu name managers player profile and we can have a list of item IDs okay this can change depending we for now we only need one ID because we only have the weapon we don't have uh, a yet any customization other than that and you'll see how we're going to handle that the customization and so on okay now let's take a look at our game manager the similar way we are doing the game manager I'm going to do my player profile and for example we're going to say static player profile player profile profile and then we're going to have a public static player profile get profile but in this case I always want to be using the resources.load because we don't really want to cast return we don't really need to cast the the profile since uh, we there's specific cases which we're going to actually need it so no need for that okay player profile then say on uh, the multiplayer lancer and then most likely on the multiplayer manager before we actually in instantiate the network print we're going to be loading the player profile player profile okay let's call this profile and we're going to take this from the game manager get profile and we're going to create an object array with our data for now we only have one ID so we set the length to one and the first data we're going to get is going to be from our profile dot item IDs let's set this to zero and we're going to pass that over here after everything else so this creates the network print but not only that it also passes the relevant data you have for your for your player for your network print so when the network print creates now a controller it knows what weapon you want to instantiate so we need now the network print which will be over here and with on photon instantiate we actually get the instantiated data so we now have the instantiate controller with a spawn index let's see when this is happening though okay 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 controller I maybe we could reuse this but I think this has to do more with its player yeah so ignore that so on photon instantiate we're going to keep a list of IDs and we can have photon view instantiation data this is going to be an object array or oh, let's call it data okay and then well for now we only know we know that there's going to be only one entry and then IDs zero is going to be data the first one as a string okay so we have saved our ID so 
Now, Instantiate the controller then. There is two ways we can actually do this since the multiplayer manager adds the network print and it's controlled from there when you are actually creating the controller. So for example, let's see where we are calling this, the instantiate controller. You can see that it takes it from here and it gets any values you have from the multiplayer references from your local player. Okay. Let's see where this gets called as well. RPC, whenever the RPC gets changed. Okay, awesome. So, when you are instantiating this, you can actually just skip this part. So, delete all of this. And in here, what we want to do is simply pass again the instantiation data from the previous instance okay so we pass whatever instantiation data we have onto our controller in uh, reality though this might change because you might be the network print gets uh, created inside the lobby you might want to change weapons onto the lobby so that means you should be passing a new updated list but for now this will do fine so it's okay okay and we are creating a multiplayer controller the multiplayer controller then has the multiplayer listener which is over here gets instantiated and in turn it's going to go and create it's going to get the state manager and all of this so no matter which state manager if it's ours, if it's the uh, other ones, but I yeah okay. Let's leave the is mine to do its own thing since it's working fine, and let's check check this. So we have our object array with our instantiation data, even if it's the same as the network prints, and. We want to get the first ID, the weapon ID, since we only have one, I'm going to write it like this right now. And I'm going to assign this as this. Okay, then states dot uh, inventory dot weapon ID equals weapon ID. Okay. We still need one action. We have an action that creates the weapons for for the player graph, and I think we should find this. However, on the init actions. So, if we go onto our resources into our multiplayer controller, we have the init player controller, init player controller, and we have another batch, and in here we have the animator hook. And we want the load weapon. Let's take a peek at what makes the load weapon. The load weapon gets finds the resource manager, of course. It finds the weapon, it assigns your weapon, it initializes it, and then it sets every every other aspect you want on this and also loads this on our target weapon. So that means we could probably reuse this without any problems. So, let's go back and find the threads again, find the, the stack, so, init client controller, init client controller, there's a few things over here, but we should add also a public state actions and action stack, okay, and when we are in here, we can also say for i action stack dot length action stack dot execute and pass the states as well. Okay, minimize now, and we have only one action for now that we need, and that is of course the load weapon.
Back to the multiplayer listener. The order here is kind of important because you will see that over here we load the ID and over here we execute those actions. So if the order is not the same, so you first assign the you first run the actions and then assign the ID, then of course obviously you won't have a weapon to to actually use. Okay, minimize then. I think we are good with this and we are ready to actually do a build so I'll be back after I've done a build but before we do any builds you can see that I got an error and we need to go onto our prefab resources and create a new managers player profile the player profile it needs to be the same way as we've written it okay which means no space and capital P's and let's set the ID to AK okay now we're going to do a build I don't have to worry about changing the player profile ID uh, right now because from our last build we didn't get any weapons so if we get weapons then that means everything is working fine okay so we are getting one error we forgot to assign the state's animator hook on the load so this yeah gives you an error and for that we're going to go on to init client controller and maybe yet better yet let's do a final references and see where this gets assigned and it's over here okay init animator hook we already have the logic for this written so let's close this and let's close the other one which means we can go on to the init client controller over here and for the init buts for the action stack we can set instead of load weapon we could say init animator hook first and then load weapon okay so you see because the way we have our architecture we don't have to worry about all those things and writing it again we already have we already have it and we have it uh, decoupled from everything else so we can reuse it okay so here's the build and you can see all the changes we've added we do have some slight problems and that has to do with uh, our AK aiming and we don't actually I believe we might have some other issues that we don't think we're going to fix those but yeah what's important is as you see we get our weapon and we actually know when we are aiming or not and changing the animations accordingly so that's all we did in this part we have a few more issues we actually don't shoot I'm actually clicking to shoot and I'm shooting from the other one and we also don't sync the reload animations and all that all this will be added on a later part so let's finish with this as always you know what to do like subscribe and if you like to see more stuff like this and people going through through walls then consider supporting me on patreon so we can keep making a lot more of these i'll see you next time